Hey guys, so this is a look <coughs> that I went for. I haven't worn false, la false? false lashes in like a few months because usually I'm like, oh, I don't really need it right now. And today I was like, let's do this. Twitter, Instagram, follow me on there. It's a fun time. Also subscribe because once we get to 500k, I'll be starting a second channel where you see maybe looks like these and stuff like that. Also today, like my skin on camera looks fine it looks like it normally does but i used an old foundation because i'm trying to do a project pan kind of a thing which is like you're trying to finish off old stuff before you buy new stuff because i definitely have a problem with makeup buying like buying things i clearly don't need or like i have 10 of already and i'm never gonna get through them like i have i think i counted some like 30 lip glosses and they're all from the same brand and it's like why why you have one set of lips one do you know how long it takes to get through one lip gloss? You will lose it before you use it up. Anyway, and I used an old foundation because I'm trying to go from like old to new so that they don't expire. And I put on my true, like if you have been f here for like a year, I did a few makeup videos back in the day where I used this foundation. It's the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, which like I swore by. I used that religiously. Like I slathered it on my face and I put it on today. And I am disappointed. I know your skin changes. I think my skin's just a little more used to like dewy, luminous finishes. So I really had to go in with like setting spray and highlighter and try and fix this because it just clung to everything. Like any dry spot I had on my face, yeah, that shit held on. It held on for dear life. I was like, please let go. Please, please, I'm begging you. So I was kind of disappointed. I was like, this used to be my absolute fave. What happened? What happened? Why did you two be so dirty right now? But anyway, Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation is where it's at, if you were wondering. I have a few mini teas, I have a few bigger teas, nothing too crazy, nothing too wild, but it's still kind of entertaining, so let's get into it. I recently, obviously I, uh, apart from just being a YouTuber, I also watch YouTube content. I watched YouTube videos before I ever became a YouTuber. I, I like to watch videos, I like to go into my recommended, see what's being suggested for me, and sometimes I I think it's my watch later and then I watch it all and sometimes I come across some gems and this time I came across a gem that I kind of, uh, I spoke about this concept before and some people, some YouTubers, influencers still don't f***ing understand it. Um, I don't think this person's going to see my video so I'm hoping that by some odd chance someone uh, enlightens her. Even though people have to tr have tried to enlighten her in the comment section and she's um, acting like she knows what she's talking about when she doesn't, which is incredible. Uh, I just stan influencers that have no clue what they're talking about there is a youtuber i'll put the screenshot on the screen sometimes i just watch really weird things and she made a bond touch video which is a bracelet that you can like touch and the other person that's wearing the bracelet can like feel your touch i guess like feel the tapping so i was like i don't want to see that video and it was only five minutes long i watch everything on two times speed anyway so it's literally two and a half minutes of my life i was like great sounds good to me and at no point in the video does she say this is an ad this is a sponsored video none of that sh which like Okay, so I was just watching it as if it was a normal video. And then she's like, um, yeah, there is a link in the description so you can get it. And usually people will put a link to the stuff they're talking about, even if it isn't sponsored. So at that point, I still wasn't like, this could be sponsored. I went into the pinned comment because I wanted to read the comments just to see what other people were thinking about the video, which is why I usually do while I'm watching a video. And she had a pinned comment where she answers a few questions. And the first question was, was this video sponsored? And she said, technically, no. Uh, the brand sent me a product in exchange for a video. That is a sponsored video. That is what a sponsored video is. And then someone under that pinned comment said, in reality, the new laws regarding sponsored content and any receiving brand stuff is that it doesn't have to be monetary gain. It can just be a product in exchange for a video and that is a sponsored video. So the fact that she received this product for free purely so that she can make a video on it, like that was the exchange. She had to make a video on the product if she wanted to receive it. That is a sponsored post that you have to disclose. You have to say, this is a sponsored video. This brand this brand sponsored my video. I don't know what people don't understand. And then she tried to like give definitions to people and get very sassy with people. She was like, the definition of a sponsor is this. And the definition of financial gain is this. And I was like, that doesn't apply because the law isn't just like, oh, here's the definition and that's how we're going to go with it. No, the laws apply in, in more workable ways. Clearly, people have been abusing the system. So new laws came in. That don't necessarily go with the definitions, but new laws came in to say this is what sponsored means now in in light of law, not just according to these definitions. Ah, uh, just um, the fact that YouTubers still haven't read up on the law, and some of them are just breaking laws left, right, and center. Like for example, um, I mentioned Emma Chamberlain last time where she did a Target 
sponsored posts on Twitter and she didn't say hashtag ad. A lot of even big influencers still are not complying with the laws. And the thing is, it's very difficult to say, oh, this post is sponsored, but they haven't disclosed it because when they haven't disclosed it, you can't be 100% sure that it is sponsored. But a lot of times, you know, we're not stupid. We can tell when something is sponsored or in some way in collaboration with a brand and you have to disclose that. Sorry, chief, um, that is just the tea. Don't attack anyone, just kind of try to educate them. But if you're like this girl who just doesn't take any education as like valid, she's like, I know best, you can't tell me what to do. It's like, okay, fine, get a fine then, you know, go to prison. Like, I just don't understand the like, she could have at least Googled it and been like, oh, maybe, maybe they, they have a point here. You know, why would they be saying this if there wasn't some truth to it? Next, we're gonna have to censor out the first word because demonetization is a hell of a But the girl, Caitlin Bennett, we all know her, she goes to protests and she asks really stupid questions and it's highly ignorant and she carries weapons because she thinks she's sick. And she recently tweeted out saying, my haters memed me into a lucrative career that lets me travel the world, do what I want and have a platform to be heard. Thank you so much to everyone that gave me free advertising in 2019. Let's do it again this year girl 2020 and i want to talk about that because i've had a lot of dms you know i have my twitter and instagram dms open so that people can send me like ideas for videos and any tea that they want me to talk about which is where i get most of my like even smaller teas now one of the the stories that kind of more people have asked me to talk about is the girl you know she's been around for a while and she's been annoying people for a while and the thing is a lot of people that make a whole video on her We'll put her in the title and the thumbnail. It's not like me where I do lots of little stories and I can pick which one I want to kind of give more attention to. A lot of these people will put her in the thumbnail and title. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying they're like doing anything wrong, but essentially what it's doing is giving her more followers because chances are that it's not just people that disagree with the girl that are going to click on those videos. There'll be people that click on it and then find out who she is and start to agree with what she's saying. So she is essentially, even if it's just 1%, like that 1% will go over and support her. And that's how she became who she is. That's how she got her career. This is now her career to go around and piss people off at parades and stuff. And the fact is like, even on Twitter, a lot of tweets will be extremely rude to her, yes, but they will get like 100,000 likes. And of those 100,000 likes, like how many people saw that and didn't like that rude tweet, but instead went and followed Caitlyn. Do you know what I mean? Like someone could have saw that tweet and been like, oh, I don't agree with them. I like Caitlyn. And then they just would have followed her. So yeah, it's got a hundred thousand likes, but how many people are behind the scenes not liking that tweet, but just going over and supporting her because that's how they found her through these rude tweets of Caitlyn. It's like, yeah, people are not being nice to Caitlyn on the timeline, but it doesn't mean that there are people that are gonna see that and think, oh yeah, she's sh there might be people that think, oh, actually, I want to give her a chance. I think she's got some good values on her, which like, I don't know why you would think that, but there are people that would. So yeah, I think essentially um, there is a lot that we can learn from here. People like James Charles and Jeffree Star and uh, Jack and Hill thrive on being involved in drama as much as they like to claim they don't, as much as they like to claim that it's like bad for them and, and all that good stuff. It's not. It, it makes their career, it, it makes it what it is. And it's a hard pill to swallow when you realize that while you're calling these people out, you're also essentially helping them out. Next piece of tea is a little update. Recently I spoke about David Dobrik and how he kept on tweeting and talking about the fact that there were YouTubers, what? That there were fans showing up at his house, expecting like him to take pictures with them and talk to them at his own house. He has a gated house, but he's not in a gated community. His house is worth about like two to three million, which like, you know, wonderful house, wouldn't want to move out of it. He has on multiple occasions now mentioned that that is his like dream home. Like he loves that house with everything in him, with all his power, but he's not in a gated community. He just has a gated house, but you know, anyone can jump over a gate. If there's no security guards around your house, someone's going to jump the fence. And he said he can't afford security to follow him 24 seven because that is something that even some celebrities can't afford. A lot of celebrities can't have security guards follow them 24 seven. So they only have them on like special, you know, when they're going out and it's like lots of paparazzi, but he can't have someone day and night at his house, protecting his house. Cause there'll be hundreds of thousands of dollars a year spent on security for reasons that are not his fault. But he mentioned this in tweets, on Instagram stories, on podcasts, where he just said, please stop showing up to my house. You are not showing me that you're a huge fan of me. You're just showing me that you have no respect for me. You don't listen to what I have to say. And people are still 
showing up to his house and then everyone spoke about this and people are still showing up to his house so now he's actually looking for houses because his neighbors are starting to be like hey when do you think you're gonna move out because we can't trust that our kids can safely play outside our house when there's random strangers just driving past and the place that he lives in is i'm assuming up in the hills in like hollywood hills because from what i gathered you wouldn't usually drive past his house unless you were going specifically to one of those houses like there's nothing there that you would have to drive to to get past his house like it, it wouldn't be a coincidence that someone's just driving past his house to get to somewhere else unless they lived there or they knew someone that also lived there because it's a very private community and there's really nothing up there in the hills other than houses so yeah there's not like it's not like there's people just driving past constantly so these neighbors are like we moved here because it was a safe place we pay a lot of money to be here and there are people driving past our house that we don't know we've never seen before so we don't want our kids playing out in the front so it's just causing an inconvenience to everyone on that street not just david and david's been looking for houses now which is really sad because as i said he did say this was his like dream home and i want to touch on that because i feel like uh, since youtube became a thing youtubers have constantly complained about people showing up to their house and in some ways like yeah if you take pictures of your house or film in front of your house you're kind of inviting it but at the same time people should have the decency to realize that that is your private space and that is your place of work as well like you wouldn't show up to someone's office just because they say like oh this is where i work you wouldn't show up there uninvited because that's just strange so why would you do that to a youtuber just because they're showing their place of work doesn't mean you have to show up there you can, you know if you see david Dobrik out and about in like a restaurant or anywhere else sure walk up to him ask for a picture but don't come to his house there are now people playing the victim where they're like david Dobrik helped me when i was feeling depressed so now i feel like you know i just wanted to meet him so i drove four hours to, to see him at his house there are much better places to meet him where he'll be in a much better mood for example events and chances are the thing is right chances are you will never meet 99% of the youtubers that you watch in my whole life of watching youtube i think i've met one youtuber that i watched and that was when i was like 11 years old and it was carrie hope fletcher i don't know if you guys ever watched her videos i haven't watched her videos in like a few years now but i used to be obsessed with her and i met her just out when she was like shopping and i was like hey do you think i could get a do you think I get a picture? And that was it. I've met one YouTuber out of the hundreds, if not thousands of YouTubers I have come across in my whole YouTube life. So chances are you will never get to meet those YouTubers. And the thing is, a lot of the time it's not the kids. I'm not blaming these kids. Because it's a, a lot of the time they wouldn't be able to go there if it wasn't for their parents. Like their parents are the ones driving them there. The, the kids are like, hey, I would really love to meet David Do Dobrik. And these parents are like, oh yeah, sure. Get in the car. We're going to drive four hours to meet your favorite YouTuber. These parents should know better. And I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of this. Another thing is, David Dobrik has been doing a lot of videos with celebrities, as we know. Like, he recently did a video with Justin Bieber to promote Yummy. But he recently posted a TikTok with Kourtney Kardashian and her kid. I'm pretty sure he had a video of Kylie Jenner as well. Like, he... Imagine being that level of YouTuber, where you're like, these celebrities are coming to me because they know that I I, I get reviews and I'll get them good promo. Incredible. He's like what we need for YouTube, for the YouTube community. Like, this is what we need, David Dobrik. Next piece of tea is Gabby Hanna, of course. This would have been an Angelica video if there wasn't Gabby Hanna. I just have to go over some stupid she says. There is a video that she posted recently that someone linked me, but it also popped up on my YouTube, which is called You Don't Know Me At All. And it has 22,000 likes and 4.4 thousand dislikes, which that's quite a high dislike number compared to the likes. It's not awful. It's not like as bad as we've seen before, but it's still like up there. So I was wondering, huh? What's the problem? This is like those assumption videos people do where on Instagram stories they'll put like, tell me assumptions about me and people will just assume things and then you reply if they're right or not. It's that. So someone actually put all the questions in the comments, which I was highly appreciative of. So the comments include, you're quitting YouTube, you don't hang out with Taylor anymore, you feel too old for YouTube, you want a nose job, you're scared of the dark, you get stressed easily, you bottle up your emotions, you're actually very assertive, slash aggressive, and passive like you say you are. You're happier than you've ever been, but depression is still a struggle. They're trying to be a better friend. In school you thought you'd become famous. They've not shared everything you feel like you should be a boyfriend, that you will never do a house tour. You're not actually happy and fake a few videos. Cringe, not funny, egocentric. You ignore any hate from people because it's not worth your time or effort to confront haters. You fake off every joke because it's not funny, you like to show your body a lot, you don't watch YouTube, you're a drug addict, you avoid drama because you're afraid of being caught in a lie, you're high maintenance, you only liked Queen after the movie came out, you're really misunderstood and try your best, you're gay, you're very kind but could keep someone up if you have to, you're a selfish friend, you're really smart but act down on camera, you grew up in a rough home, you don't recognize your toxic traits, you're the about knocking guys with a rejected guy, you don't actually prefer I really know Joe, you're actually smart than you look, uh, you see Chris and hate, you act confident to make a few insecurities. Those are basically the, the, the questions. And once again, Gabby Hannell just can't help herself. Oh my god, okay. Not watch YouTube, correct. Except doll makeover videos.
Okay, I actually saw this in a video that didn't have to do with me and I don't want to call out the person that made the video because I'm actually a big fan of their videos or the other person who I'm friends with but somebody made a video about somebody I'm friends with where they were talking about work that they do and the video started with this thing that this person does is very bad. Awful. You ignore any hate from people because it's not worth the time or effort to confront haters. Yeah, it just kind of comes down to if you address haters once, where do you draw the line? When do you start? Where do you pick? What do you choose? It's too much energy taken away. And most of the time, if somebody has decided that they hate you, you're not gonna convince them otherwise, so. So what she basically says is that she doesn't see the point. She doesn't know which hate to address and which hate to not address. But I think that's just down to common sense, isn't it? Like if you have a functioning brain with like a few brain cells in there, you can more or less see which type of hate you need to address. Like if someone's calling you fat or ugly, that is the hate that you don't want to address. Now here's also where, where I draw the line with this, right? Because I've mentioned this a few times now. Hate and criticism, two different things. What hate do you address? None. You don't address any hate, right? You, you don't address hate comments because that just doesn't make sense. Hate comments are like, go yourself. I want you to die or uh, you're fat, you're ugly. But criticism is what we've been doing for the last two years and you just don't address it either so it's not like you just don't address the hate you also don't address criticism and the fact that you think all of this is just drama no that's we're calling out your very and manipulative behavior i assume you avoid drama because you're afraid of being caught in a lie no i don't like it there were a lot in here about you like drama you love drama blah 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 i really don't and that's why i don't respond to a lot of stuff the way people want me to even though i know it would bring a lot of views it brings attention i don't like it false uh, most of the drama that has started it has started because of you you did things or said things that were bad problematic and we called you out on it you started the drama so you have to finish it you have to apologize or acknowledge or just you know Say, I agree with what I said and I'm not going to change it. But either way, you have to address something. This is your job. Being public is your job. So you have to publicly address things that you've publicly done. Mainly when it comes to things like the Jesse Smile situation. It was a private situation, but then you guys made it public. And now you have to publicly address it. I'm sorry. That's just the tea. That's just how it works. With the Trisha Paytas thing, you started it. Trisha made it public. It involved mainly YouTubers. Like, you can't, uh, you can't start drama privately with YouTubers and expect them to not call you the f out for being manipulative and sociopathic. So yeah, you have to address that. And the fact that you don't just goes to show that you know you're in the wrong and there is no way you can explain that to people, but you also don't want to apologize. So then there's, there's that for you. You don't recognize your toxic traits. Maybe, I guess I wouldn't know how to answer that because if I didn't recognize them, then I wouldn't be able to say if I recognize them, but I do spend a lot of time in therapy and uncover sh there. There's a lot of deflecting there. It was a very short answer. Usually she takes her time to answer the very irrelevant questions. Like, oh, you, you want a nose job and she'll bang on about that for however long but then the actual ones that she needs to address she just kind of like oh yeah 10 second answer and move on you do recognize your toxic traits a lot of the things you do aren't things that you wouldn't realize you're doing if that makes sense like they are objectively bad things to do there are some things that people can do that end up in the moral kind of gray zone where like you don't really know if you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing you don't really know where you stand on the spectrum of like bad to, to good there are some things that are objectively bad for example hanging out with someone that physically and mentally hurt your best friend objectively bad thing mainly when you're doing it just so you can network you know lying to people is objectively a bad thing to do there's just lots of things that you do that are toxic traits and you now claim that you unpack all of this in therapy and that you're like okay i'm pretty sure that what happens is she goes to therapy says everything about everyone else her therapist is like, well, objectively, you know, from a third person point of view, I wasn't there. So from what you're telling me, you're right. Um, and she's like, yes, I'm correct. I think you need someone that will call you out on your shit, but they can't call you out on your shit if you're not telling them the whole truth. And I have this theory in my head that Gabby Hannon doesn't tell the whole truth to people because she wants to portray things in a way that make her look like the good person. I don't take criticism well because you see it as hate. It's not that I don't take criticism well because if you're somebody who's ever worked with me in a creative environment, I want criticism, I want feedback because I'm insecure. I send my demos to so many different people in different areas and different types of producers and I'm like, what do you think? Because I want to be better, not just in professional stuff, but in my personal life too, where I'm like, do you think I'm annoying? Like it's to the point of it's too much. But if you're presenting somebody with criticism, but you start it off in a way that is hate, 
hateful. Okay, I actually saw this in a video that it didn't have to do with me, and I don't want to call out the person that made the video because I'm actually a big fan of their videos or the other person who I'm friends with. But somebody made a video about somebody I'm friends with where they were talking about work that they do, and the video started with this thing that this person does is very bad, awful, terrible, and then goes through the video, and then at some point in the video goes, and this person, if they would just listen to constructive criticism from people like me, this person's not gonna watch your video to this point because you started off your video by saying it's bad, terrible, they do not deserve this thing. Why would they take your criticism? Because you've already shut them down emotionally. What that person was saying was helpful, but if I was that person watching the video, I would have never been able to get through it. And then you never give that person the opportunity to get to the point of constructive criticism. Does that make sense? So she starts it off in kind of a semi-correct way. It's like you have to address drama in a specific way for the person to take that in the right way. But there comes a point where we're sick and tired of walking on eggshells to make sure that the youtuber doesn't feel too offended to actually address the drama like we start off usually i'm talking about the drama channels that i watch or the commentary channels that i watch we start things off pretty gently you know we do a tweet here and there like hey maybe you should address this and then we mention this in a video um we're pretty chill about it at the start but when you constantly say criticism is hate criticism is hate criticism is same thing say at some point we're gonna be like okay then we're gonna just hate on you until you address it because clearly criticism is the same as hate so what's the difference if we criticize you or actually just hate on you and i think the person she's talking about about the i think first of all she's talking about superwoman and two i think she's talking about drew gooden oh my god i thought i just saw something move anyway hallucinations it's these lashes drew gooden made a video where he basically just said this is bad this night night like nighttime show is bad and here is why it's bad that is not hate <laughs> like i could say i don't know apple juice is bad here is why i think it's bad and no one's gonna get offended because it's it that's not hate if i said apple juice is the most disgusting thing i've ever seen and anyone that drinks it is absolute garbage like yeah that is at that point a little bit overkill but just saying hey apple juice is kind of bad and this is why it's bad that's not hate the reason why people are so harsh on superwoman in her vi in like their videos now is because she continuously ignores criticism she will get actual valid criticism nicely phrased and be like oh I, did, I didn't see that i am blind to it but the moment someone is like oh this is so trash you're uh, you're just a shitty woman that's not funny like at that point she's like oh, see all this hate all these hate comments that i'm getting no valid criticism just hate comments she just ignores criticism because it's easier to ignore it deflect it than to address it and you're doing the exact same thing you say oh i just get hate look people calling my nose big and calling me fat and and all that stuff uh no criticism just these hate comments because you clearly pick and choose what you want to address and what will make you look like the victim and make you look like oh i don't know what's happening these people are just so mean to me like I'm not here for it, sorry. I don't agree with this video and hence why it has so many negative comments. I will continuously make videos on Gabby Hanna until she understands that I am not here for her shit and no one else is here for her. So that's it, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything, comment down below and subscribe because I post videos every other day or with some delays, just whenever I can. So turn notifications and then you know when that's happening. Follow me on socials, down in the description down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.